Well, it seemed like it was a big win, and then maybe it wasn't a big win. I don't know. That's why we get on people who are much smarter when it comes to the rule of law than at least myself. I won't speak for John and Mark. And that's why Chris Kobach is here, the Kansas Attorney General on KCMO Talk Radio. This came after yesterday. The Supreme Court declined to block a Texas law known as SB4, which makes it which makes illegal border crossings a state crime and allows state officials to conduct arrests and deportations. But then just a few hours later, what happened? Well, uh, you had the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans issue a temporary order that allowed SB4 to go into effect. So now, Chris Kobach, we just kind of sit here and we wait. Is that where we're at? Yeah, kind of. I wish I could give you a more definitive answer, but this is a really interesting case, not just because of the subject matter, but because it's it's all about the Supreme Court's emergency docket. Uh, and I think that's – well, let me, let me give you a quick su- summary. So first, the district court – Texas passes the law, then a federal district judge uh, p- issues a preliminary injunction to stop the law. Then the Fifth Circuit stayed the preliminary injunction, which means now the law is going back into effect. Then the Department of Justice rushes to the Supreme Court – to get them to lift the stay, and that's what ha- and that was the decision uh, yesterday that the Supreme Court declined to lift the, the stay, which means that the law goes back into effect. Then, but there was a concurrence in the opi- uh, in the Supreme Court's you know very very brief opinion by Justice Barrett saying really the Fifth Circuit should move first. So the DOJ runs back to the Fifth Circuit yesterday and gets them to issue a divided two to one decision not to stay the lower court for the injunction, which means the law is not in effect. But all of this is very temporary because the Fifth Circuit said they're they're scheduling oral arguments on the case a week from today. So it I I I hesitate to read too much into what the Supreme Court did yesterday. um, But I really would love to because I would love to see Texas's law go into effect. But it might have been more about the process. The Supreme Court has gotten very frustrated with cases that should come up to it more slowly being brought up to it on an emergency basis. Well, and that's part of what I read yesterday, especially um, with Amy Coney Barrett and Brett Kavanaugh, is that their views were based on procedural reasons and they might change after the appeals court took additional steps. And this is why I appreciate your insight because, uh, you know, even, and I love Fox News, but even they were like, rah, rah, big win. And it's like, well, there's so much legalese to what's going on here. You, you can't really celebrate anything yet, even though we agree the Texas law would be good for the state and good for the country. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, I, I think this is probably more about procedure right now. As I just relayed that that weird history, stayed, not stayed, enjoined, not enjoined. But we are going to see the Fifth Circuit issue a big decision. Uh, one way or the other, uh, and they'll have their argument on on Wednesday, um, and and we will eventually see this case go to the Supreme Court on the merits. I, I think there's no doubt about that. Meaning on the case itself, and it's a it's a huge issue that I've been involved in for more than a decade. Because as many of your listeners will remember, I uh, helped draft Arizona's SB 1070, uh, which was about 12 years ago, and that case went all the, all the way to the Supreme Court. And, on a, and that was the case that allowed it. The, the law was partly struck down and partly upheld. The part that was upheld allowed Arizona police officers to ask uh, people on the highways or people they encounter um, to provide if they are legally in the country and then to hold them, detain them while they check and see if they're actually legally in the country and to make arrests uh, of, pe- of aliens illegally in the country for the purpose of turning them over to ICE. And the other parts of the law were struck down. But that's the important part for this case, because Texas is now wanting to go one step further and saying, well, if, if we if officers could arrest somebody on the highway and turn them over to ICE, why can't we, in the face of this current crisis where the, the Border Patrol has been forced to stand down by the Biden administration, why can't we arrest them at the border and turn them right back across the border? And, and it's sort of the next logical step. And it's a big, big case. So this is I mean, you're right. Um, It's it's so interesting because there's the legal angle. And then, of course, there's just the like protecting the country angle. Um, And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, if anyone still doesn't believe that ushering in illegals is the goal of Joe Biden's administration, 
what happened yesterday should more or less convince them. Now, they'll say, no, we, we just don't want the states overriding federal laws, I guess. But if they just did their job, none of this would be part of the conversation, right? That's exactly right. And and the states are not, and you framed it exactly correctly, they'll make the case in court, oh, the states are you know, doing something inconsistent with federal law. No, the state is actually doing exactly what federal law says. Back in 1996, Congress passed a law that says every alien apprehended at the border either has to be detained or has to be turned around uh, to remain in the adjacent country, namely Mexico. No more turning them loose. That was the, that was the purpose of Congress in 96, and Bill Clinton signed it, wanting to get reelected. The end of catch and release. And here the Biden administration is doing catch and release by the millions. Do you th- Texas is the one <laughs> consistent with federal law, not the federal government. Yeah. Uh, do you think this is really as simple as, and obviously, you know, you've been in politics for you know, a couple decades. You know this as well as anybody. Do you think this is truly just a political calculation on their part and nothing more? Uh, on the part of the Biden administration? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. I, I, well, yes, but I do think there are many attorneys who are, you know, in the Department of Justice who are true believers that the federal government get, gets to just push the states aside and the states can do nothing. But I think in the in the political ranks of the White House, yeah, they, they see this uh, as a political move for multiple reasons. It, it energizes some portions of their base. In the long term, they think many of these individuals who are allowed into the country will eventually become voting citizens and will vote Democrat. Uh, I think there are definite political calculations what the Biden administration is doing. Chris Kobach, the uh, Kansas Attorney General on KCMO. So if you were to guess, I mean, you mentioned um, next Wednesday is when the Fifth Circuit will pick this up. When do you anticipate this actually getting to the Supreme Court and, and something being decided either way that would allow Texas to do something like this? Um, I would say at the fastest, the Supreme, the, the Fifth Circuit would decide the case in maybe two months. Uh, that would be take us to May. Um, but at that point, it would be very difficult to get to the Supreme Court before they shut down for the year in June. So I think the case gets to the Supreme Court in the fall um, and possibly before the election. But I d- very doubt very seriously doubt the Supreme Court would render a decision before the November election because they wouldn't want it to play a role in the election itself. That and also the U.S. Supreme Court, it moves pretty slowly when they issue their final decision on a on a an issue of this this big a you know this big this much consequence. Yeah, well, Chris Kobach, thank you so much for the insight as always. Uh, we greatly appreciate it, and we'll be talking to you soon. Have a great day. You too. My pleasure. All right, that is uh, Chris Kobach, the Attorney General for the State of Kansas on KCMO.